Welcome back, Shalliners, and welcome, Rihanna Navy. I still don't really understand why you guys call yourselves that, but whatever. Today, we're gonna talk about Rihanna's breakup from Hassan Jamil. Now, these two have been dating for like three years. Doesn't that seem wild? It seems like both longer and shorter because she's so private about it. It's like, we know very, very little about the relationship, but you know I got some tea. You know I got some tea that they're not reporting. I've heard some things and I'm gonna share some things because I love you, but who would I love more than you guys? Rihanna, the mother, the daughter, and the holy Fenty. She is our Lord and savior here on the Chalantrage. She is the picture of a warm-blooded animal, a bad bitch, a woman who does not need a man and will dump them if they act out of pocket. Or will she? When I tell you what I know, we'll, we'll see. But beyond just the tea and beyond just the gossip, what are we gonna learn about Rihanna's breakup? We're gonna talk about dating someone with big cultural differences. Are you kind of doomed from the beginning? Is there a chance to find middle ground? Or is your only chance to be with someone from a very different, very specific culture to totally subsume yours and go into theirs? We'll break it down. But first, just want to remind you, if you have a love question of your own, find me on my website, shallonlister.com, and click get help. Also, follow me on Instagram, where I let you vote on the next topic and give you some daily wisdom and, you know, bad bitch power. All, all in one little place. So also be sure to listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday. Before we get into this, I have to explain why I look the way I look today. My hair is not wet. My hair is not wet, it's greasy. You know what I did? I put in this, I used like a conditioning treatment. I literally smell like a dog, I smell like a wet dog. You know what I used? Alberto V05. Like that shit that's been around since like, what, the 60s, the 50s? I'm like, I need a really good conditioning treatment. How could I go wrong with something that has been around forever? It was like I put motor oil in my hair. This is day two of this. I've washed my hair four times. My hair isn't wet. And don't say, oh, it's shiny. It's greasy. You touch it and you're like, uh, like a dirty dog. And it's also frizzy and dry, but somehow greasy. I'm in hell. I don't know what to do. Please, please tell me how to get this stuff out of my hair. Like, do I have to wash with like dish soap? Like Dawn cuts grease? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just... So I look ugly, but we're gonna deal with it. Cause you know who deal with it? Rihanna. Cause Rihanna, we always talk about being the warm blooded animal. If you're new to this channel, what that means is we can be two types of animals, just like in the animal kingdom. You have a cold blooded animal, like a snake. They can't regulate their own core, right? They need stimulation and warmth from the outside to keep them alive. And sometimes people are like that. People like Kylie Jenner. Always gotta be posting on Instagram. Here's where I am, here's, do I look good? I have to document it, blah, 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 blah. Because she needs that feedback and that validation to keep her emotional core regulated. But then you have people like Rihanna. She, we don't know very much about her, right? She's been with this dude for three years. There's maybe four times they've been photographed together. There's so little that we know. Why? Because she is confident enough to keep her private life private. She doesn't also like over post on Instagram. She moves in silence like a true hustler, like a true predator, you know? And there's something to be said about that to just be very, so confident in yourself and like yourself, you don't need other people to agree. True confidence is not, I hope everyone likes me. I know everyone's gonna like me. Confidence is I'm fine if they don't because I like me. It's a hard place to get to, but that's what we do here in the Shalon Trash. That's what we do. So. It is a sad day that our queen, not me, Rihanna, our, our higher queen, <laughs> has broken up with her boyfriend, Hassan Jamil. Let's learn a little bit about Hassan because we don't know very much. And like I, if you also knew this channel, I used to be the editor of a celebrity magazine. So I know like a lot about these celebrities, just it's in like the core of my brain. So sad, such useless information, but I'm like, who, who actually is this dude? Like, I knew he was from Saudi Arabia and I knew he's a billionaire. And once you hear that B word, do you really care what follows it? Kinda. All right, this is the highlights of his wiki. He's deputy president and vice chairman of Saudi Arabia operations for the family owned international conglomerate business, Abdul Latif Jamil. Is that a person? which among numerous business operations has distribution rights to Toyota vehicles in Saudi Arabia and other countries. He's also involved in philanthropy and promoting health and safety and assisting job seekers and those in need in Saudi Arabia. He's a bit of a snack, pretty, pretty hot. Like he's got like that very sculpted facial hair, but like it works, you know? He studied, let's see, he, his early 
education. He was in Japan for a long time, studying at the Toyota Motor Corporation in Japan. He went back to Saudi Arabia. He studied at the London Business School. Fuck. He is fluent in English, Arabic, and Japanese. He's an art collector and a keen supporter of the arts. And so his philanthropy paragraph is larger than his work history paragraph, like wide range of social and economic initiatives, refugee education, job creation, poverty alleviation, food and water security, healthcare improvement, education training, blah, 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 microloans. So, I mean, man, you got a billionaire who's philanthropic, trilingual, international as fuck. And do we mention the billionaire part? But you also have a man who is very, very devoted to his culture, right? All of this philanthropy is in Saudi Arabia. I mean, like, why shouldn't it be? You know, like charity starts at home, like good for him, you know? But Rihanna is not Saudi Arabian. Rihanna is from Barbados. Do you guys say Bayesian or Barbadian? Because the people from Barbados, I know they would say Bayesian. And when I was writing for Star, I would, I would say the Bayesian singer Rihanna and people would be like, no, that doesn't make sense. It makes it sound like she's from Baja. I was like, well, I'm sorry, you're stupid, but this is in fact what it is. And they're like, put Barbadian. I'm like, the Bayesians I know don't say that, but I know that they're both correct, tangent. So Rihanna is not that. She is from Barbados and she is very into that culture as well. That's not working either. She's also, you know, like a secondary American. Obviously we embrace her as any country would be lucky to have her. So I wonder if these cultural differences came between them. But we're gonna talk about that in a second. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Do you wanna know what I've heard? I've heard that part of the reason Rihanna's been a little bit scarce in the public eye lately is because she's gained about 40 pounds. Look, she could gain 140. Love her. But what, wait, why has she gained so much weight? Hassan Jamil. Now, when we get into a relationship, we get boyfriend butt, you know, where it's like, the workout, maybe I'm not gonna get up so early. We were up late drinking. We just wanna like order seamless and like look at each other and watch TV and whatever. That's normal. But it's then you kind of wake up and you're like, oh my God, we're getting back to the gym. <laughs> like I can't just sit around and do this. But this was not what this is. I've heard that he purposely like kept her favorite snacks, unhealthy snacks, everywhere that she would be, stocked on the jet, always on the yacht, waiters bringing them by at his villa, like because he wanted her to get fat. Why? Control. Control. Is this not the most fucked up thing you've ever heard? Is it not? But is it also something you kind of can believe because guys can do this in various forms a lot? You know, like this, what do we say? The hallmark of abuse is isolation. I don't think he's abusive. Maybe he is, I have absolutely no idea. But when you make someone fat, you are isolating them. They don't wanna go out as much. Their clothes don't fit. They're not posting sexy pics on Instagram because they don't feel particularly sexy. But you're telling them, baby, you look so good. Yeah, keep, eat, keep eating, you deserve it. You deserve it. You work so hard. She's like, I do, I know. Like, that's all you have to say to me. And I like, in goes the Oreos, like a pelican, oh, just, I don't even chew, like a boa constrictor. So that has like two gains. She sees him as like this beacon of unconditional love, right? And like, oh my God, I'll never leave him. Look, he loves me even though I'm a butterball right now. But then the secondary gain is she's never gonna leave him and he has control over her. That's fucked up. And so you were like, well, I don't, you know, my guy doesn't do that. Well, no, he might not. And hopefully you're in a very healthy relationship, but he might do it with like clothes. You know what, I love that baggy clothes trend, you know, like the Billie Eilish thing, or you know, just even like the Tumblr girl, like big baggy things, big baggy, things. that's what you should wear out to the bar tonight. Really? Yeah, that's what you should wear. Put that dress away. Put that crop top away. You should wear a big ass hoodie, my hoodie that smells like me. Like it's, and it, when guys do things like this, when people do things like this, God knows women do it too. It's not like, I always say, there's not like a whiteboard in the basement and that's like phase the first, complete. Like this shit happens almost unconsciously, you know, and so gradually because people want control and they shift as, as subtly as the earth shifts on its axis. They shift their life and they shift their behaviors to get what they need. And hopefully the thing that they need in a relationship is healthy, right? 
Hopefully, they need a nurturing dynamic and they need communication and support. But it is not always like that. Maybe the thing they need is unhealthy. Maybe the thing they need is drama, control, total subservience, maybe total dependence on the other person. So they keep themselves sick and, and weird and whatever so that the person plays mom. There's a lot of dynamics. So we often give people a pass like, well, he's not doing this on purpose. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares if someone is hurting you on purpose or not? Can we take that off the table as a data point? Here, two words for you, drunk driving. Someone hits your mom drunk with, her, with their car. Do you give a fuck if it was intentional? I don't, that person's getting murdered no matter what. Let him out. Dear, your honor, I would like you to, to show leniency to this drunk driver who hit my mother. I would like them out on the street where I can find them. Intentions don't mean shit, okay? Behaviors mean shit. And it's almost worse if they don't mean to do something because then it means it is hardwired into them to behave like this. And you can't change what you don't acknowledge. I would rather be dealing with someone who's like got a plot because at least a plot is like in the foreground of their brain and I can tap into it easier, right? And I can manipulate them right back. And there's ostensibly some sort of end goal. If you're just like free floating, controlling someone, uh, that where's that gonna end? Where's that gonna end? So it's a very crucial data point that he maybe was keeping her fat and keeping her in her little shell so that he had complete control over her, you know? But let's say none of that was going on. Let's say none of that was going on, right? Let's say she just was eating because she wanted to eat. It's, I would love to blame all like my eight pounds that I'm trying to lose on somebody else. And well, you know, I will, I'll blame it on Max. I'll blame it on Max. Cause he, when we, not together anymore, but he's like a fitness dude. And you know how much those people eat? Do you know how much I should not eat like that? It wasn't good. Anyway, what could have torn these two apart is simply cultural differences. I had a friend, she's still my friend, who was dating and like deeply in love. They were deeply mutually in love with each other. A prince from a Saudi Arabian country, a prince. Not like, oh, you know, like Lord Disick is a Lord. No, a prince, like very good friends with members of the British royal family, like a royal. And he was like, sounded like Hassan, like spoke all these languages, very into philanthropy, like went to like London School of Business or Oxford or something like that, like very international. It wasn't in like this Middle Eastern bubble of that culture. Like he was very modern, you know? And yet they reached this, this crossroads of, well, I basically need like, not a necessarily a Muslim, Muslim wife, but a wife who is going to follow the rules here. Follow, who's, who's not gonna be the Meghan Markle. I need a wife who's gonna like fall in line in terms of what's expected of me from my family culturally, and who's gonna be gang for that and on board. We gotta raise our kids like this. You gotta live at the palace most of the time. No, you kind of you can't go back to Dallas and live there. Like, no, you're not gonna take the kid there for summer. No, that's not gonna happen. Like, you when you go out, you have to wear a burqa and you know whatever the culture dictates. And she was like, she was shocked. And I, I tried to tell her this. I tried to tell her this. I'm like, I've never dated a prince. I've never dated. Well, I've dated Persian guys, but like, not like they're a prince of Persia. But I have dated a lot of Jewish guys. And at the end of the day, I have heard from every single one of them, I gotta marry a Jewish girl. I gotta marry a Jewish girl. And I was like, says who? And they're like, my mother. <laughs> like, hello? Like, my mother says. And I don't go against my mama. And it's funny, it's like the things you start out loving about them are the things you end up hating. And this isn't like a cultural thing. This is just like dating wise. Cause like what I loved about these like Jewish boys that I dated is they were such good family guys, like they loved their mom, they loved me, They're, they loved women. They had such respect for women and that's deeply attractive. And then I'm like, oh, you love your mama, but you love your mama. I mean, like you are doing exactly what Jacqueline in like Forest Hills says you're gonna do. And that doesn't, I'm not part of the plan, you know? And it was, it was hard. And so then 
after enough of these experiences, I would go into dates with someone who was made from a different culture and be like, I wouldn't say, do you want to marry a Jewish girl? Because people are going to lie to you. They're going to lie to you because they're lying to themselves. Everyone wants to think they're autonomous. No, I make my own choices. Oh, Jacqueline wants something? All right. Like, okay. It's very hard to buck the trend of what your family wants for you. It's very, very hard because you love them. We're hardwired to, to please our parents. It's a, it's a survival mechanism, right? They can't just kick us out of the nest. We got we to gotta be really good. So now I ask people, what expectations do you feel like your parents have for you? And if they're like, well, I have to marry another Japanese girl. It's like, the, I don't want to take myself down this emotional dead end, you know, down this rabbit hole that's going to go nowhere that's hurtful, you know? And it's, and this, I wonder if, if this is kind of where Rihanna came to this point and made a different decision. If she's like, you know what? He's so modern. He's so progressive. I'm modern. I progressive. I can be anywhere in the world. I don't have to be in Barbados. I don't have to be in LA. I can do whatever I want. We're going to make this work. Surely this is no big deal. Surely the opposites are what attract. Study after study after study shows opposites do not attract. Not for very long. I mean, fundamental cultural differences, fundamental, fundamental differences in life goals do not attract. It's very difficult. Now, in some ways, yes, if you're from different cultures, but you have the same life goals, great. Like, that's great, you know? Those to me are the best relationships. Like, he's Irish, I'm from Taiwan. Like, we just like blend our cultures, but we both want the same things. And we're operating without the set of like shadow expectations from our family or whatever. So we truly are autonomous adults. Then that's great. But that's not what was going on with Hassan and Rihanna. At least that's not what was going on with Hassan. Maybe Rihanna. She might have been looking for entrances and he might have been looking for exits. Or he, in some way, knew this relationship had an expiration date. He knew it. Because the expectations he has on him are not something you can escape. Just like my friend who dated a prince. And no, Hassan isn't a prince, but fuck, isn't he? Like, come on. Royalty is merely power. And he has probably as much power as the Saudi royal family does. You know, like... Tomato, tomato. Like you don't have to only be a royal to be laboring under family pressures. We can be poor and be laboring under it. What do you mean you're not marrying a Catholic? What do you mean you're dating a Jew? What do you mean they voted for Trump? That's valid. So <laughs> there's a lot to unpack in this relationship here. There's issues of control. Maybe there's a cultural element there, you know? There's issues of opposites attracting. And at first, that like spark that brings you together, just like I'd said, the things you love are the things you end up hating. The things that are interesting and novel about someone and stimulating and new become the things that wear you down. I don't wanna go to church. Well, when you met me, you loved that I was such a Christ-like man. Okay, well, I don't wanna go, boom. You know, I love that you love your family, but if I have to go to one more Sunday dinner, you know, these things wear on us. And so it's really, really, really important to date people who have the same life goals and the same, the same bio rhythms, the same things that are important to us. So how can we figure this out? How can we figure this out? Because like I said, you can have two people from two different cultures who mesh really well. You ask them the first question. What expectations do your parents have of you? Now, if someone asked me that, it's like my mom expects me to be financially independent because that is truly the only independence. She expects me to be healthy, take care of myself, not be like blowing coke all night long. You know, I paid like a lot for my allergy shots so I can breathe out of this nose, not messing up. And I still can't really. And she expects me to be happy and self-actualized and fulfilled. And whatever form that takes, Theoretically, she's fine with. Theoretically, she's fine with. I haven't really tested the boundaries. Like, I haven't brought home a man from Saudi Arabia with, who's in a completely different culture and who would like tacitly maybe expect me to convert or live over there. I haven't tried that. I have stayed within the silent parameters of my family's expectations and allowances, you know? And because I feel like if I brought home, if I brought home Hassan Jamil, I might. My mom would be like, I'm worried for you that you're gonna lose yourself in this relationship, that it's gonna be his way or the highway, 
that everything is going to be on his terms and that his family expectations are so much stronger than yours, it's going to make you malleable and it's going to, it's going to erode your sense of self and independence. I know that I know that's what she would say. And that's what I would say to Rihanna. And that's what I say to anyone dating someone who comes from a very, very, very strong culture background, who is very hyper-focused on it, and whose family is very hyper-focused on it. Because like I said, they're not just gonna like tell you on the first date, oh yeah, I'm just I'm just like fucking around with you, the shiksa, like I'm gonna marry a Jewish girl. People aren't gonna tell you that because they don't wanna believe that themselves. They don't wanna believe that about themselves. So other things you have to ask. Because maybe it isn't just as deep, maybe it's not as extreme as like, he's a Saudi billionaire, I'm a Bayesian pop star. Maybe it's just like, we're from two kind of like, he's a poor kid from Southie Boston and I grew up like pretty rich in Michigan, so like, can we come together? It could be like much more subtle. Or like he went to like the bad high school and I went to like a nice school, you know, or whatever it is. He's a plumber, I'm a lawyer. How can you make these things work? I am a huge believer in co-recreation. This is a term I came up with. You, to me, the foundation of like a happy relationship, like in addition to the life goals and you look, you have the same philosophy towards life, is do you recreate in the same way? I always ask people, what is your perfect Saturday morning? And if they're like, I'm up at six, I've got my hiking boots on, I'm kayaking down the river. I was like, I am leaving, like this is, this is a nightmare. This is an absolute hellscape for me. Like, no. Or if they're like, you know, we sleep in a little bit, we pack a lunch, we get in the car, we pick a cute little town, we go, we maybe like have some beers, we walk around. And I'm like, I am listening, daddy. Like that to me is like my perfect, my perfect Saturday. So relationships, they have a lot of downtime, right? And so you have to make sure that you want to spend your downtime in the same way. And that probably sounds silly, but like it isn't. It truly isn't. It's super important. Also ask someone, like, if you could change one thing about your family, maybe what would it be? See what they say. It's like, I wish they were less rigid. I wish they were more communicative. I wish blah, 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 blah. Get some data points, because like I said, people are not gonna be super forthright with what their family wants of them. So in sum, you can date someone who's a little opposite of you. You can date someone from a very different culture. But if the opposite things are like, I like sushi and he likes Thai, great, that's great. He likes country music, I like rap, you can make it work. If it's he's Muslim and he needs a wife who's Muslim and I'm Protestant, I have seen so many girls get into relationships with some sort of polarization. I don't want kids and he does. He wants to move back to Southern California and I don't. And it's this Mexican standoff, right? It's this like old west showdown where each person thinks the other person is gonna change their mind. And guess the fuck what? They don't. And you get a year, two years, eight years into a relationship and then boom, it explodes. And it explodes because the woman made it explode. In a, I mean, in a good way, because we are the one who feel, who feel this pressure from society and even our own biology to like make decisions about where our life is going. Do we want kids? And this is not a bad thing. Like, we shouldn't be drifting through life like a fucking jellyfish, you know? Like, well, I don't know, I'm just going where the tide takes me. Okay, you're gonna waste your youth. You're gonna waste your youth. And I wonder, I wonder if Rihanna and Hassan failed to have these upfront conversations because she said in recent interviews several times that she wants to be a mother. She's 31. Like, this is a normal, normal thing for her. She's not a child bride. He's also 31. He's also been married before. Mm -hmm. So, I wonder if she thought he's gonna change his mind or if she was broadcasting and projecting traits and malleability and elasticity on him that did not actually exist. He's not gonna need to leave, live in Saudi Arabia. He doesn't care what his family wants. He's already been divorced. Like he's, he's his own man now. Girl, maybe he's not. Maybe he is, but you don't know that until you figure it out. And we don't wanna have these conversations. I don't wanna have these conversations. I might scare him away. Good, run bitch. If you're not on the same page as me, please get out of my life. Please get out of my life. <sighs> because what's our non-renewable resource? Time. And our second, youth. They walk hand in hand. I am not wasting this face on that boy who is not going in the same direction as me. It's like Antoine Saint-Exupéry said, the author who wrote Little Prince, love is not looking at each other, love is looking out in the same direction. And that, that says it all. So I wonder, 
if Rihanna and Hassan were only looking at each other and not looking out. And eventually things came to a head where she's like, I don't want to start over and I love you, but really are we moving in the same direction? And this is what we owe to ourselves in our life because you don't want to spend three years with the wrong person. Not that it's a waste, nothing's a waste if you learn from it and you have wonderful experiences, but if you're deeply in love with someone and logistically you know you you cannot be with them because this is not moving in the right direction, that's an agonizing situation. We've all been in it. And that's what's fucked up is we have all been in it. So our goal for life is to not be in this situation. If you're on date number two with someone you really like him, but you know logistically this isn't right, he dropped out of college, he's gonna work at the gas station forever, he has to marry a Protestant chick, like get the fuck out. Spare yourself. Spare your perky tit years. What are you doing? What are you doing? What would Rihanna do? She'd leave. She'd leave. I want to know your thoughts on Rihanna and Hassan. Do you think their cultural differences tore them apart? Do you think they're like an adorable couple and they're going to get back together? Because rumor has it they did break up for a little bit in like 2018, got back together. Or do you think this is like it for good? And more importantly, who should she date next? If you say Drake, I'm going to block you. I fucking hate that guy. But tell me your thoughts and tell me if you have been or currently are in like an intercultural relationship and how you bridge the gap between the two different selves that you are and how you find that middle ground and if it's created some friction. And for more, click like and subscribe. Also follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO. And if you have a love question, go to my website, ShallonLester.com.